Hello, everyone, and welcome to Totally Uselessness. I'm Dan here, solo casting, unfortunately, because Devin is ill, and so she couldn't make it in. Like I said, it's just going to be me today. We were originally going to do a topic um, about Deadpool, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do talk about Deadpool, and then I think I have an idea to talk about something else after that. Yeah, we were just going to talk about Deadpool 2 specifically. I saw it last night. I feel like it's no surprise. This movie is excellent. I really enjoyed the second film. My recommendation here on this is if you saw the first movie, enjoyed it, you're going to enjoy the second one. It's very much a well-made sequel. There are some things I obviously not 100% loved it, but overall, it was really good, well-made, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. So yeah, just basic story, of course. It's uh, Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. He's just kind of living his life, and then it all goes horribly wrong. His girl, Vanessa, dies. I mean, what is that? Oh yeah, I guess I should say spoilers from here on out. (laughs) But this is like the first... 10 minutes in the movie so yeah he's got like nothing to live for he's kind of bumming around ends up at the x mansion and leads to a hilarious sequence where he kind of just he's they give him like a trainee uniform and they're like okay come along be an x-men trainee in a situation and then of course he deadpools it up and it goes wrong and he ends up I, I kind of liked this idea that uh, they use, like, these collars. I assume they're straight out of, like, one of the comics to, like, suppress their mutant powers. And so he ends up in a prison, and he's just kind of, like, his cancer comes back. And so he's just dying, and uh, this kid that he goes in the can- you know, into it with, he's like, my superpower is just growing cancer. He's like, get away from me. I'm just going to die. Uh, he kind of just, yeah, he's like, the whole time, he's just like, leave me die in peace. Until we get... Josh Brolin coming in as Cable, uh, which I liked uh, the Cable effects and like the makeup and how he looked uh, because there's a few scenes where he's uh, shirtless and he's got uh, all like the robotness out of his arm and up to his chest and then his eye and stuff like that. I really liked all the effects. Uh, The Cable effects were all really cool. I, like I said, really, really cool stuff there. And so, yeah, he shows up. And then it, he thinks initially, of course, that he's after him, but it turns out he's after the kid because Cable's from the future. And then he knows, hey, this kid's going to be doing some bad stuff. Pretty standard, like, time travel plot in that way that it's like, oh, we just got to stop this guy uh, before he just turns bad. And then uh, eventually it's revealed that, he, of course, he kills Cable's family. So that's why he's really going back to stop him. And uh, the kid's had a pretty messed up life. <laughs> You know, he's a mutant. It's not all gone well for him. He's in, like, a different kind of, like, a a messed up Xavier mansion, basically, where the guy's, like, a religious nut and, you know, tortures them a little bit and all this kind of stuff. Uses these repression collars. Yeah, Deadpool, eventually, he's, like, he wants to protect the kid from Cable and then leads to... I thought this was hilarious. So, uh, as people may or may not realize, I don't watch trailers. And... So I didn't realize that there was, like, this whole team that he puts together. And so they do this whole sequence where they're like, okay, we got to assemble a team. And so there's, like, auditions, and they get, like, headshots, and they're going through, and they're like, oh, so what is your special power? And then eventually, like, there's just a normal guy. His name's just Peter. <laughs> and I, was, I thought, like, that they were just going to be like, oh, okay, you know, hilarious, that it, but he just gets, gets rejected or whatever. He's like, no, he's on the team. And so they do this whole sequence... Um, with them parachuting down, it's got uh, Terry Crews and uh, the woman uh, Domino, of course, and then this Peter guy, and then the guy who like spits up uh, vomit acid, and uh, his name's Zeitgeist, which I thought was hilarious because they're all like, "Oh, so you can like you know get your finger on the pulse of what's going on?" He's like, "Oh no, I vomit acid." <laughs> anyway, the whole sequence goes horribly wrong, except for him and Domino surviving. Which, again, just leads to some some good action. I thought there was some cool... Yeah, there's some cool comic book action. I liked uh, in this one sequence, they're basically after a convoy. And so then they fight, like, on the truck. And then it kind of goes a little over at the top, of course. But it's, again, you know, comic book action movie. Nothing too outlandish, in a sense. Like, they do this great sequence, like a classic... <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds is confronting 
cable and he does this thing he's like oh you know karate and he takes out his two swords and he starts spinning them and cable just pulls out a gun starts shooting and they do like the whole clip and then he's like you know he's blocking some of them and then they stop and he's covered in like bullet holes from chest to down to his legs and he's just like ow <laughs> so stuff like that pretty hilarious i felt uh turns out there's a huge foreshadowing in that the juggernaut is in the same prison convoy as the kid kid lets him go and then they're gonna go get some revenge essentially uh ryan reynolds or my ryan reynolds well he is deadpool (laughs) but uh they team up with cable because he's like i can't fight the juggernaut and then it's like him domino uh and then he goes and tries to get colossus to join him up uh, join up with him eventually he comes he shows up and then they fight uh, you know for a nice climactic ending and it, the ending was cool because it was like it wasn't a big bombastic again world shattering event uh, which I liked it was just like this small fight at this house although it was funny again like no authorities show up or anything that it, but whatever that's fine um, but it was kind of for the uh, future events right like that's what uh, Cable's trying to prevent and so is Ryan Reynolds because he's he's basically tries to convince Cable to be like look the kid's not bad he hasn't killed anyone or anything yet don't murder him and, you know it's like Terminator kind of plot right like, <laughs> but instead of saving humanity he's just trying to like you know murder a kid so then he doesn't kill more people uh, so yeah it's uh, like I said good fight there good stuff I am um, I'm not too familiar with Domino. I know she's... I want to say I, I've heard she was in something else once. Uh, but I really like the depiction of Domino in this film. Uh, there was a lot of cool stuff there. And she's just like, oh, you know, there's a good back and forth where she's just like, I'm lucky. And uh, kind of reminded me of like Dirk Gently, where she's just like, oh, you know, I'll just be somewhere where I need to be whenever I need to be there. But things just like all fall into place when she's like running somewhere and then something just falls into place so she can easily run up and jump onto the truck and stuff like that so it was a really cool depiction of domino the actress was really good she had a cool look and they did like the uh rounder eye i don't know what it's supposed to be there but uh yeah it was i really liked that even this like the like i said the whole sequence when they put together the team and he's like we will be x-force and then they do they all jump off out of the helicopter it was good stuff so yeah i don't know if there there's not much more i can say to like praise the movie i would definitely recommend going to watch it uh there was a couple things i didn't i so in true sequel fashion they definitely do reuse some of like the same kind of joke or the same kind of idea and that's totally fine it worked in the first movie why not in the second movie like the opening credits in this one it's got the same kind of idea where it's you know it's not their names it's something else kind of thing and and that's totally good there was a couple of reused jokes though where i was kind of like eh i wish they would have come up with something better or different there but uh you know it's it's two or three different times where i just didn't laugh as much because i had already seen this joke before and it was kind of the same joke i did like when he's in xavier mansion and uh because colossus is trying to like you know rehab him and he's like you should join the x-men and stuff and he's riding around in uh, xavier's wheelchair and he's basically like no one's ever here what is going on he's like you think the studio could throw us a bone this is bogus kind of thing and they do like a, a shot because he's facing one direction and behind him there's all of the x-men uh, like james mcavoy is there and beast and everything and they're all there and they just kind of close a door and stay keep keep hidden and stuff like that so i did I thought that was pretty hilarious it was a good laugh moment there because it is just again it's a negasonic t- teenage warhead colossus and we get yukio but they don't really explain her power as much in this one and she just kind of shows up and does some stuff at the end but i liked her in wolverine 2 where they talk about how she can like see death and like how people are going to die and stuff but this one they just kind of like she's just there so i did want to talk about uh some of the uh i was curious about the box office numbers about this movie uh deadpool 1 made 708 708- $83.1 million in box office on a $58 million budget, which I was like, wow, that was that is a pretty good rate of return there. No wonder there's a Deadpool 2. I feel Deadpool 1 was um, almost like a sleeper hit in the sense that people, like the people that were really passionate about it that helped the movie get made, essentially, by badgering Fox, uh, you know, went and all saw it and everything like that. But this movie had really good rate word of mouth because even I 
I was like tertiarily interested. I was like, oh, that seems like kind of a neat idea. And I know it's kind of passionate. Uh, but I was blown away by the quality of the movie and really enjoyed it. And so I was curious about the second movie. And this is recording, I'm recording June 6th. Uh, so Deadpool 2 so far has made $613.2 million. But its budget was $110 million. So they definitely pumped up the money in this one. Uh, you know, like I said, there was a lot more CG cable, of course, needing more CG because uh, he's always summoning shields and doing all sorts of cool stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is, of course, a fight with Juggernaut and Colossus. They were both CG characters, right? So that can't be cheap, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, more, more characters, more actors. Uh, so, you know, not surprising that the budget was bigger. It's still pretty moderate, though, considering like some of the budgets for you know, bigger productions, I assume the X-Men, because these are put out by Fox, so I assume the X-Men, they're in the $200 million range, and the same, you know, all the Marvel movies, like the bigger ones, $200 million, $250, that kind of thing, so it definitely looks to be on track, like it's gonna make probably the same amount of money, but it costs more this time. But I don't know, I don't think that that's still, I mean, that's still a good amount of return because of course that's not assuming for later things like dvd and etc so i I, i'm curious because i was looking and there was like oh will there be a deadpool 3 and i was like oh you know i wonder that as well i enjoyed the movies i enjoyed ryan ryan reynolds as deadpool i assume he's still down with the project that he would be willing to do a third film considering like he shows up to do ad spots for these movies and like he He's very much behind the project. I just mean, would the studio be up for it? Because the story at the end sets up it's possible that there could be a sequel uh, again. You know, because it just kind of ends. And it ends open enough that it's like, eh, they do a sequel, cool, if not, whatever. I feel like they, if they could come up with another story, you know, that makes sense. I'm sure they will be willing to to pony up the money for another one in two years. I could definitely see there being a Deadpool 3. And of course, Josh Brolin as Cable, like I was mentioning previously, playing Thanos in the the other, in the Avengers, of course. He does call him Thanos at one point, which I liked that. That was a good good little thing. It's it's curious with them because uh, Fox owns the X-Men franchise, which by extension, because I'm like they own the ability to use the word mutant and none of the Marvel movies have mutants per se (laughs) right but they're there uh but they don't call them that and then this one of course they do use the word mutant and all the time so that my like when he calls him thanos i mean that's a marvel thing that's is it okay but it's not part of what they own right so i mean i assume it's okay because obviously it wouldn't have been in the movie yeah i thought there there was some good uh, fourth wall breaking in this one uh not so much in the beginning like in the beginning he explains the scenario again but in the previous one uh i felt like it was just kind of it was like how you introduce this character in his kind of world and this it was just like him telling a story about what's going on and i liked it there was more like a few more subtle moments in that like somebody's just explaining something and he's just looking at the camera you know with like this look even though he's behind his mask you have just like whatever this dude is you know this is ridiculous kind of thing so i really liked uh, that like i said uh Good stuff. Really recommend it. Go out and see it. Still in theater. Or see it on Netflix when it comes out. Or DVD and such. So I just wanted to change gears a little. And talk about something else. Um, something that probably Devin and I wouldn't have a discussion on. Uh, it would be video games. I enjoy video games a lot. I've been playing them since I was a kid. I feel that that's... The past month or so, I've kind of gotten into this rabbit hole of YouTube videos related to video games. And because I don't usually watch a lot of like video game media and this kind of thing, again, trailers are just not my jam. And I feel like in this era of video gaming and YouTube, you can't believe anything anymore. Anything that is shown, uh, for example, I think E3 is coming up quite soon. Anything shown at this is all a lie (laughs) in my brain so uh, like I said I've just been kind of watching these videos and watching people's other opinions about analysis of video games and where kind of the industry and this and that how it's kind of going and I feel like 
I just wanted to throw some opinions into the ring here. So as I was just previously saying, all of these trailers, all of the f- gameplay footage, quote unquote, all made up in bogus. It's all a lie. It's all there to just sell you something that's not even done yet. And I think that's 100% bogus. A cinematic trailer, different kind of story thing. It, you know, it's meant to introduce you to the world and what the game's going to be kind of about. Okay. Gameplay footage that is two seconds or two minutes of a small sequence of a map, that doesn't tell you enough about the game. Maybe it tells you, okay, it's a third-person shooter and with cover mechanics and it looks flashy. But that's, again, the game's not even done. Like, they have that level just completed to show off. And the reason I'm saying this is because we've seen it so much from all these big publishers, triple gaming I'm focusing a little more on here, that it's it's all bogus. And people, rightly so, get mad about it, except for the people that don't follow and do their research. Don't get mad about it because they don't even know. They don't even realize that they're getting duped into these games. It's just leading to... It's leading down a dark path with especially EA and games like that want to be services in games that the service shouldn't be there. When this started to happen, these were all things that from mobile gaming got transferred into AAA titles because they just want to make more money off you. And I kind of, I can understand the one side of the coin where they're like, oh, gaming developing is very expensive. These games start to cost more and more. And I've always felt that that's totally true. And people talk about like, well, adjusted for inflation, games used to cost more. And that's also, okay, totally true. Then my opinion here, charge us more. Straight out of the box. Charge us more, but don't put all these stupid systems in place to then try to bleed us in games where it doesn't belong. You see, you see, usually see these kind of systems in free-to-play games, because then that's how they actually pay for the game and for the content that they're making. You know, you can pay for things to make things quicker, you know, ingredients or recipes or experience boosts or whatever, right? But when you shell out money for Call of Duty, an EA title of some sort that's a single player game especially or a game that's a multiplayer game and especially with the current era of they don't even have their own servers they make one of your consoles be a server so even that part where they're like oh the servers cost to run that's a lie they are just trying to bilk you for more cash and it's working. They make so much money off that crap that it's insane. And again, I feel that it's people who aren't doing the research or who are younger. And then they're, you know, they're buying the, the cards at e, EB Games or whatever. And then they're able to just buy these items uh, or boosts or levels or whatever they're getting. And I just feel like it's so disingenuous and so broken that it kind of leads to what I'm thinking in in my next point here is that people feel like they have to buy these games to like get in on it and I feel like that again is just not even needed anymore who cares that you don't play the game right away and I feel like a lot of people feel this way about like a a Call of Duty franchise because like oh there won't be any more multiplayer on the other one and everything a good multiplayer game will live far longer than two years. Look at a game, Counter-Strike, League of Legends, Dota 2, Rocket League, you know, these games, their multiplayer is still going strong and still has users and new users even coming into them because the multiplayer is good. So if you're talking about like a Call of Duty type, Battlefront, Battlefront 1, was barely three years old when they made Battlefront 2 and and released it because they were like, oh, we have to fix what we broke about it. But it's like, why didn't you just update Battlefront 1, (laughs) you know? And instead, what they added in was just a microtransaction BS system that is the bane 
of what's happening in the industry like like again it's like okay charge us more straight out but don't put this stuff in there or two if you want to make an mmo and I, it's hard to, for people but just charge a monthly subscription charge five bucks make it small people there's dota plus two and that's five bucks a month 60 bucks a year that's probably gonna be less money than what they're demanding or wanting from all these other things and i understand that the money comes from whales it's a very small population or percentage of the people that buy all these microtransaction items because it's a form of gambling and it's a form especially with the loot boxes i don't know this is kind of a rant here but you don't have to play the game right away a good game will live far longer than the publisher you could even anticipate if the game is good people will stick around again and there's like this shift uh, uh, not to harp on ea on this one but they canceled the star wars game because they were like oh no one buys single player experiences anymore which i think is a total lie they just didn't want to pump money into it because they couldn't microtransaction a single player game and they tried it kind of with uh, Mass Effect 3. They made it multiplayer and then they added junk in there to try to make you pay to like, you know, make systems quicker or whatever it was. I actually never played Mass Effect 3, uh, but that's from this one right here. But it was like they couldn't figure out how to monetize a single player game correctly after the fact that you just bought the game. And so if game productions are so high, I've always felt like they're like, oh, the game production is quite high. And it's like, yes, it costs a lot to make a game, especially now, especially if you make an engine from scratch. That's going to cost a ton of money. And then they talk about how much they have to put into advertising and stuff. And it's like, well, the Internet doesn't cost as much to advertise on than like a TV spot anymore. And yes, I understand you still got to pay people to make YouTube things and run your social media account, etc. But there are so many people creating content out there that if you show them your game and they like your game, they will talk about your game. They'll play it on Twitch. They'll show it. And you don't have to pay for that part. (laughs) So I feel just like that there are better methods. And there are still great games being made. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. Uh, And I know, like, I only have a PS3, an Xbox 360, and uh, my computer. So... Mostly these days, primarily play games on my PC, so I'm missing out on some good games. Like, I really actually, that Horizon Zero Dawn looked like a great game. Haven't been able to play it just because I just, I can't. I don't have a platform for it. It's not coming out on PC, unfortunately. I'm still waiting to play something like Monster Hunter. Again, gotta wait because I don't have the right console for it. But I'm okay with that. A good game will still be good by the time it comes out to PC, even though some may never come out. But there'll be patches. They will have figured it out. There's no need anymore to buy a game day one. Because, you know, there's going to be expansions from a good game. You know, there's going to be some good stuff that comes. And you'll eventually be able to buy a bundle that has it all. I know that not everyone can do it that way or wants to do it that way. Kind of weird because then, of course, it doesn't show the industry that, oh, this was a really popular game. It sold really well because I didn't buy it till three years later. But I feel that as a consumer, there is no incentive for me to purchase it day one anymore. There's no like, oh, wow, that was so great. There are so many video games out there that I'll, you know, I could spend weeks and weeks and weeks and I'll still never catch up to what's popular now anyway. I'm just advising patience even if you wait a month then at least you can wait read some reviews there'll be patches ever since i don't think it's the cause but when world of warcraft came out i played world of warcraft that's 2004 it was broken talents didn't work things didn't interact correctly you know there was problems with the game was the game fun totally i played it for a long long time but my point is is that this trend of even now, this is where I kind of draw the line where I'm like, if you get an Xbox or a PS3 or four game, sorry, and they have to patch the hell out of it right away, it's like, what is the point? Like, delay your game a bit, polish it up, and, you know, people will understand that 
you want to make your product better before you put it in and you're like, okay, I got to do an install of four gigs or 10 gigs or whatever. And then, oh, I got to download an eight gig patch. It's like, well, what the heck was even in the box anymore? What was the first download even going on? Like, why is your game so broken that it has to be just patched so much? But you wait a little bit, your game will be patched by the time you buy it, right? Like... You know, and again, I feel like there are so many self-fulfilling prof- uh, circles in gaming. It's like, oh, games sell well during the fall and winter months and your Christmas time and stuff like that. It's like, yes, but that's because most of the big releases come out during that time. If you release a great game in the spring or the summer, it'll still sell well. People still want to play a great game no matter the time of year. I'm not a publisher. I don't have the ear of a publisher. These are just some thoughts that I have on the video game industry that it's just too bad like i love playing video games they are so much fun you can do so many cool things in them and you play with your friends online people around the world it's great but the people that are trying to monetize the hell out of them are just ruining the fun like this this kind of an example here i i really like PUBG. I'm a big fan. I've had the game since uh, early access because I liked the formula and I wanted to play it. Excuse me. And I was watching some videos talking about how there was no progression in PUBG and I thought that was kind of funny because older shooters, Counter-Strike comes to mind of course, there was no progression system. It wasn't until Call of Duty 4 that they even thought of it and it was really cool. Then it was like, oh, as you get better you get these some perks and stuff like that. And that's kind of neat. Now they've change these progression systems to MMO grinds where like you you'll never get the stuff unless you spend 80 hours to play the game and it's like then you're only halfway through and that's not fun anymore and so I thought it was funny how this uh they're like oh there's no progression in PUBG and that was fine with me I was okay you farm or you you play the games and you get the points and you get the crate and you get some like a t-shirt and I was like cool and it wasn't until recently and I, I was totally fine with that that was to me was a great progression system you get some la- random loots to change your character's appearance and then eventually weapon skins because that's obviously where it was going to go perfect but then for whatever reason they had to introduce paid crates and it was like that's not what i signed up for that's not the way this game was supposed to go down it was supposed to be i paid you the money i'm doing the things and then maybe eventually you know, like, it's just, again, they had to add, add this monetization system, which I feel like that same monetization system is what killed H1Z1 for me. I was like, what's the point of getting all these crates that I'll never be able to open? And that was my annoyance with PUBG was I couldn't choose to get a non-paid crate. It's random. And I'm like, what's the point? Yay, now I get some points and then I'll get a crate I, I don't want to spend 250 to get a key for. That's why I always sold all my Counter-Strike crates because i didn't want to pay for a key to open something bought your game and i enjoy your game but i'm not going to continue to pay for it in this way like that's why i'm saying that it's possible like final fantasy 14 still has a monthly subscription fee and so it does work it can work uh going back to the mmo star wars knights of the old republic mmo has a free-to-play option has a paid option i think elder scrolls online same kind of deal like the where it's like you buy the game and you can play i hope it's like guild wars where you can pay <laughs> play all of it but if you you get the subscription you get more stuff xp boosts and you know more space for etc uh so you know like a guild wars always had a good option there it's like you pay the game you buy the game until it went free to play it was like you bought the game and then you could buy items within to again change appearance or get boosts or this or that kind of thing but it wasn't pay to win it wasn't like you had to do it it wasn't locking you out and that's what a lot of these contents and that's a lot of these systems are doing and this was always something too where it's like guild wars 2 where i was like especially i really liked it where if you played with somebody who wasn't the same level as you or you went into a different zone so if you use the one character and you're like man my character is super powerful but you went to like a level 10 zone your character was just automatically leveled down to level 10 and i was like why didn't more play- games just take this idea because 
again, like say going back to a Call of Duty, you're like, oh, I don't want to be behind my friends. I'll never get to play with them because of the systems. And it's just like, they can just down level people. It's no problem, right? Like, I don't know. It's when the skill, when skill isn't a factor, then what's the point of the having a high level character? It doesn't indicate that you're any better. Whereas I know in Halo 2, uh, a game like Dota 2 has its own MMR system as well. I believe League of Legends does. And Overwatch kind of does as well, where it's like your level is a reflection of your skill. So you don't get placed into matches with people far below your skill. That's cool. That's great. You know? So overall, I really don't have much of a point here. It was more just a rant about video gaming. But, you know, just a couple cautions here. Like do some research don't buy into any hype anymore it's not worth your time your effort or even your anger later when the game doesn't turn out to be the way you thought it was when you pre-ordered it i i used to enjoy pre-ordering games it used to be a cool way to get to get a copy because they had to make sure you could get enough copies in the store And, you know, previously they didn't have that. It wasn't until later where they introduced all these systems and you get some cool stuff. But like I said, if you just are patient, there'll be a Game of the Year edition, which has all that stuff anyway. And so it won't even matter that you didn't have the extra horse armor to start with. You'll get it later. It's no big deal. Just do some research. Check it out. You can wait. There's nothing wrong with waiting. If you really enjoy the next... Say you really want to play the next... Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever kind of thing. You can wait a few weeks. You can watch some people play it on Twitch. You can watch some YouTube reviews. You can watch some playthroughs. And then you will be able to for- and make a far more informed decision about whether it's worth your money and time. You'll be able to see what kind of systems involved, what kind of progression or microtransactions if there are some. And then you'll be able to know what is going on in here. What is the deal with this? So you don't get caught in another situation where now you're stuck in a game and you might just drop it totally within your rights, but you have already paid for it. You know, so that's all I'm really kind of advocating here. Do some research, check it out, be patient. Uh, There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, Like I said, there are so many outlets and ways to see what's inside a video game now that there's no reason before, like in the past, you literally just read the back of of the box and you saw some pictures and you're like, oh yeah, that sounds kind of cool. I'm going to check it out, (laughs) right? (laughs) No demos, no free-to-play weekends, no anything. You just read that back of the box and checked it out. So, you know, we have the technology. The power is in our hands to try to steer things and affect change. And, you know, there are some games that have come out and they're great in the beginning. I've played quite a few where it's, you're like, man, those first like 10 hours, so much fun. But then the game, you know, the, the system's just not there or it's just not as fun as you thought it was going to be. And that's just reality sometimes. And, you know, what are you going to do? You just, you move on. There's other games out there. Like I said, I know I've kind of ranted a bit here. Uh, let us know. We got the website. You can contact us here. Uh, website, tomeuselessness.com. We're on Instagram, uh, tome underscore of underscore uselessness. We're on Twitter, useless underscore tome. You know, we got a YouTube, which is mostly just our videos as well. Or, I mean, our audio podcast, but put up there for everyone to enjoy. So, yeah, let us know. I mean, contact us. So, yeah, Deadpool 2, check it out. Video games, check them out. I love them. Uh, But, you know, be wary. Be more aware and, you know, of what you're buying. And thanks for listening. Have a good night.